got some moment of truth. I'm gonna switch this on. It works. As we saw from the last video, this battery is done, but everything else about it seems to work fine. And I have an iPod that I took apart and broke. So I kind of know where the catches are. I've got a spare battery, some masking tape, and I've got some pry tools. So the good thing is, is that because I've already got this off, is that I know where all of the catches are. So there's three on the left side, and there's just two around the bottom on the right side. And I think, I thought there was one here, and I was prying around this area, and I think that's where I broke this iPod. And then there are three at the top, which were quite tricky to off. I think this bottom left one and these top ones are quite tricky to off. So what I'm going to do is going to put some masking tape around the bottom of this and get it open and get it fixed, hopefully, without breaking it. So I've really roughly <laughs> taped over this with masking tape because the masking tape I've got is huge. It's really sticky, though. So I have got some ice apropic al alcohol coming tomorrow that I'll use to clean up the back if it's really bad. So time to get it open. As you can see, finally got there, got the back off. The only problem is, is these are so tight, you will get some scratching around the edge. But what helped me is this spudger, whatever you call it, has actually had, I, bought, I got these secondhand, but this one had its has had its top grind down to a point, which really, really, really helped. I was trying it with these ones for ages, and I was like, oh, this one wasn't that hard to get off the back, but this one was. So I managed to get there. Um, just need to be careful with your clips. They're not too bent out of shape, so hopefully they should be okay when I go to put them on. Obviously, be really careful when you're, like, digging in. Try to literally just, just hit where your clips are. And I was going in and just down because if you were down, there shouldn't be any electronics for you to hit. Because obviously if you go down and then up or that, like if you go like in and then downward, you're going to hit these components. So one thing I am noticing straight away is um, these batteries are different. So this one, maybe it was easier to get off because the batteries are different. This looks very Apple-esque, and it just says lithium polymer Apple. So this is it. So this one has had the battery changed, and it still didn't work. So <laughs> hopefully the battery fixes this issue. But yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so I've got everything detached. There are three screws on this side, three on this side, and there's a little ribbon cable that you need to flick up and undo. Once you've undone that, you can lift this up and you flick it over to this side because the screen ribbon cable is here, which you need to flick off and undo. Once you do that, they'll be separated. And then I got a hairdryer and a low heat and just gently warm the back of this up. And then I was able to pull the battery off. Now, what you might be able to see is that there is some like black gunk or glue that they've got protecting the solder, which funnily enough, isn't on this one. So this one's definitely had this battery redone. So maybe I didn't break it. Maybe I just made the situation worse, but maybe it was already broken. <laughs> but so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unsolder it here and then pull the battery off, scrape away the black stuff on the other side get my new battery, pop it in, and make sure that everything is good. So this is my new battery. I've got some protective ends on the end here. It looks like the cable itself isn't actually too much longer than the one that's currently on here. The one thing that is different is there is a red, a black, no white cable, there is a yellow cable. I am going to assume that that is meant to be the white cable. If not, it won't work, but that's is what I plan to do. So that is the battery desoldered. Now trying to get the new battery on. The thing is, these pads have got holes in and that's where the end of the cable's meant to go through. I've got nothing to mop up the excess solder. So I might just have to 
just attach them to the pad without going through the hole and see how that goes. So I really need to invest in some solder wick because I can't get these through the holes, but these are too long and I'm wondering, I'm worried that it'll like, if the cable's too long, it was short on the side of the battery casing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the ends of these super short so they're only just touching each pad and then solder them directly to them and hope that that will be okay. Cool, so I've cut these ends a lot, lot shorter in the hopes that they will just be enough to stick on the pads and not touch anything else. I should really make all these the same length, but I'm not gonna, so we'll see how that goes. Cool, that's everything soldered together. One top tip, cut all the cables to the same length. It makes it much easier. Don't do what I've done. <laughs> not good, not good. So now what I'm gonna do, attach the screen to the back of the motherboard and then I'll attach this ribbon cable, I think a click wheel ribbon cable, back to here and then I'll turn it all on, see what happens. If it all works, then I'll glue the battery down and put it back together. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Although annoyingly, the black and the black, the black and the red cable did touch and there was a tiny, tiny spark. I hope I've not broken anything, but we shall see. Cool, so the new battery actually seems to be a little bit smaller than the old one. Cause look at all this room here, but it means I can squish this cable into here. Should be slightly more um, power than the old battery. Cause this is 400 milliamps, this is 450. But you can definitely see, I don't know if, well, maybe not my camera. You can kind of see the battery's like kind of crystallized and stuff. But one thing I will say is that the ribbon cable on the back of the screen, you have to make sure that that is properly, properly seated. I just spent ages trying to get this to work again. And it was just backlight was coming on and it would beep at me and I could use a scroll wheel, but nothing was working. So make sure that it was like properly, properly seated. It kind of clicks when it goes in a little bit. So I'm going to see if I can switch these cables down without getting that solder pop up and get the case back on. And hopefully we should be good. Actually, just remembered, I need to put the screws on and the Wii clip, which is here, that goes underneath the headphone jack, which I probably should have put in already. <laughs> okay, everything's back together. The headphone jack was a bit annoying to get back in. You have to slide it under first before screwing all this down. I screwed all this down and then forgot to put the click wheel back in. So had to undo it all, do it again. Hopefully there's enough room here to get the cover on. I think there should be, because look how much smaller this battery is, but apparently it's the same. As long as it works, that's all I care. It's a moment of truth. I'm gonna switch this on. <gasps> it works. Obviously it's very gunky because of the tape I use, but I've got isopropic alcohol coming tomorrow. So I can get that all cleaned up, but now it's time to get the cover on. I'm gonna turn this off again. Put this into lock mode. And I'm gonna put the cover on. So, moment of truth. I'm gonna squish these cables in here. Sorry, two seconds. So I've put the case on like this. I think I'm going to have to squish really hard to get it to latch back on. So I'm going to need both hands, but I'll maybe leave the video running to see if you can hear it go crunch. Moment of truth, oh, she works. Case back is on. So what I would say, if you're going to do this yourself, if you're attempting this yourself, I haven't seen how much they are, but buy a new case back because the case is on, but as you can see, like there's a slight, I don't know if you see on this camera, there's a slight gap all the way around. The case is on and it's secure. So what I had to do was, obviously when you take this case back off and you're pushing down to kind of get these clips to unlatch, you're obviously pushing these clips downwards and bending them down so they don't quite hold it on as tight when you do latch it back on and also you're pushing them this way so what i've had to do is bend these clips as close as i can to the wall all the way around and i tried to get this pry tool up and kind of push them back up to where they would originally be and then i started from the top 
So you want to make sure you get these clips. Where's this one? Ah, here we are. I can show you on this one. Get all these gubbins out of the way. You want to make sure, obviously, the clips are going into these holes here. So you want to make sure that, yes, you've pushed these clips close to the wall, but not too close, because you don't want them to go the wrong side of the hole. As you're putting them in, you want to make sure that they go in the hole. And then, so I started at the top, and then I did the sides. I did the sides with the three clips. So I did this side next, because there's no clip up this side. So as I got in, I had to then try and push the clip into that hole, and again, all the way down, because what you can find is that the clip, you can bend it in too much that it then goes down the side here, or you can, it can be bent out too far the other way that it just doesn't clip in. So you've got to make sure that you get that just right and go all the way around the edge. And then you should end up with something like this. Not perfect, but the, obviously the case is not going to fall off. It was never waterproof to begin with, so I'm pretty happy with this, considering I paid £25 for this and, uh, what, this 7th Gen Nano? So I've got a battery for that as well. Just going to flip this round to my ugly mug for a second. So I just had a look on eBay. So a back housing for one of these is £8, but it's from the United States. It's another £10 delivery, so... It's going to be 20 quid for a new back. So obviously I've just spent what, 13 pound for a battery from Amazon. I'll link that below if you want. So I don't want to spend too much. I might have just bought a working one. But these are obviously all getting to the age now that if you find one of these, probably you need a battery replacement. And that's what I don't quite understand the whole thing of like buying a brand new boxed iPod if you find one. Because... Is going to have been sitting not charged for like 20 years so it'll be dead and you need to do this anyways but as i say if this camera is any better there is like a, a millimeter gap all the way around but it's not going to come off so i'm pretty happy with that because yeah she's a really oh two zone a really nice iPod. Also, don't judge. That's G4. I just got my, my iTunes just to fill it. Full stop. Now, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't gone through all my iTunes to delete stuff I don't want yet, so don't judge me. But yeah, happy days. Also, the other thing I didn't really mention that I used is F Flux. I did... I've got some leaded solder. And you know what? I actually found that unleaded stuff worked better for me i know everyone swears by the leaded stuff but this worked good old matt plinn's solder <laughs> so two seconds i forgot to see if it actually charges because that would be a disaster if it doesn't charge uh, it doesn't look as if it's charging okay so i think i'm actually going to need your help so when I stick it to the laptop and then disconnect it, it says it's charging. But if I plug it directly to a plug, it doesn't recognize that it's charging. Now, the wires, the solder was good. Is there something I could have broken that's like stopping it from charging? So it's not been long enough to tell yet the battery's fully charged. But I've just been thinking, when this goes to sleep and I then like wake it up, for a split second it will show that it's charging. I'm wondering if the ability for it to tell when it's like charging and how much battery it has comes from the battery. Because this battery's got quite a lot of like circuitry in it compared to like this one that has had the battery replaced where it's, well, it's just a battery. Do you know what I mean? So like when I wake this up, see, it has a battery thing, but then it goes away. So is it just charging? but it doesn't show you that it's charging? I don't know. But I think that might be the case. So I've just seen some music on it, left it for a bit, and it's now fully charged. What I've read online is that it can take a couple of like charge and recharge cycles for this to, to work properly. The, charging indicator so charge it a couple of cycles fully charged fully drained see how it goes and see how long the battery lasts because it is a bit smaller as you saw so 
yeah, update you in the morning. As you can see, it is now 10 past six the next day. I woke up at half 10 this morning, and as soon as I did, I woke up and I put this through my speaker system, and it's been playing since half 10. It is now, I say, 10 past, almost quarter past six, and the battery is showing half full, and it was fully charged yesterday. So that's like, what, eight hours pretty much? Plus, when I went to bed last night, I played Vortex and Solitaire on here for a good hour and a half, and I also played it for about half an hour today as well. So I am extremely happy. Look at this classic. I don't know why I went on to that. I'm going to come off it. <laughs> let's, let's go back. Yes. So I am extremely happy with this battery and how it turned out. Obviously, it's not been any meaningful length of time, but I think I can recommend this battery. It's been what? If I include the gameage that I did last night. Yes, I call it gameage. Uh, <laughs> that's nine and a half hours. It's reading just under half full or one quarter full which if the calibration is right as i say sometimes it can take a couple of days for the calibration to get itself going again <laughs> uh if that is correct then by looking at that i think i've probably got another maybe two hours left of battery just listen to music which would be what 11 and a half hours worth of like music and some game image which is just really cool and the battery came with a wee bag of stuff, some sticky strips, screwdrivers. So those plastic sp spudges are, are rubbish. Don't even attempt to use them. Go get some metal ones. But all of that for £13 next day delivery. I'm very happy. Also, the third gen Nano is just where it's at. Look, it's got the cover flow in it. It's just, which is just so cool. I love that. Uh, but I mean, look, I know, I know the fifth gen has got the cover flow, but you have to kind of do that and to get it going and it's rubbish. That's just really cool. And yeah, I'm so happy with the battery life on this. Um, may, but maybe maybe I'm just used to like 20 year old iPods that only have like four to six hours worth of battery life. But yeah, near enough, what, possibly 12 hours worth of battery life just playing music and some games. That is really cool. And I'm very happy. I don't think I've said it yet in the video. I might have, but obviously I've got a wee gap at the bottom along the 30 pin. Obviously there's gaps all around the side, but they're not really noticeable, but there is a little gap along the bottom here, which I have got some, I think it's, it's called T7000 or B7000 glue. It's the black one. I'm just gonna put it under that gap there and put some pressure down on it while it dries. And that should get rid of that gap. And it will look almost brand new, I type, <laughs> except from the little tiny scratch that I've got that you can't, oh, you might be able to see it there. A lot near the bottom of the click wheel. But I'm so happy how this turned out. I hope your project goes well. I mean, if I didn't break an iPod, then hopefully you don't either. Although this is my second attempt. So please be careful. If you like the video, please do leave a like because it really does. It makes me feel good when I just get like, you know, one or two likes in a video. Like, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And well, happy fixing your iPods because this is just so cool that I can get a full day of music from a, a tiny little thing. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.